Hi everybody, it's Courtney, and today I'm going to be using one of the new Simon Hurley Create stamp sets called Cakewalk. And today we're going to be making three very, very simple cards with just one image each. So I'm going to start off with a piece of stark white cardstock by also by Simon Hurley. And I'm taking this little ice cream cone here. Going to kind of use the grid lines in my Misty to make sure that it is at least somewhat centered in my panel. Stamp that down with some Copic Safe ink, and I'm also going to stamp this onto a piece of masking paper. Now, I'm not doing any ink blending in the background, so you can really mask this with whatever you want. It doesn't have to be super tacky. And when I cut my masks, I like to cut right along that black line. I trim off any excess as I go along so it doesn't get in my way. And I keep my scissors somewhat straight and kind of just move the paper around with my less dominant hand. So I'm going to go ahead and before I stick that down, I'm going to stamp out this little additional stamp. It's kind of like a layering stamp set. It adds like the lines in that ice cream cone. And it is extremely easy to line up. I'm not so good with layering stamps, but this one I had no problem at all. Then I can go ahead and mask this out. Now I want there to be three ice cream cones. The two on either side of this front one is going to be a little bit set back. So I'm just going to tilt it back just a little bit. And you can see that I'm using a piece of acetate. That's just so that I don't have to clean off my stamp. And that's just pure laziness on my part. So I'm gonna stamp that down onto the right hand side and then get my acetate back, line that up to where I want it on the other side that I can close my misty door, pick up the stamp, remove the acetate and stamp this down once again. Now, before you remove that middle mask, you wanna make sure that you're going to stamp out this little texture stamp or whatever you want to call it on the outer ice cream cones and then I can remove my mask and you can see that I have a little scene there next I'm going to use the cupcake and I'm pretty much going to do the same thing only I'm just going to add a few more so again I'm going to start off with this one in the middle and there is another stamp for this one as well and it kind of adds some of those lines that are in the cupcake wrapper and once again, stamp this onto some masking paper. Now for these first two cards, I just used one mask. And I for this one, I shifted around a little bit. And that's the good thing about using some tacky masking paper is that you can reuse it multiple times as long as you're not doing ink blending. But you'll see that I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I'm just going to work back a little bit further than I did with the little ice cream cones. And you'll see that once I add these two, the second and third one, I should say, <laughs> then I can remove that mask that is in the center and then just line that up so that I can stamp the ones that are going to be kind of stamped off the edge of the paper. Now, this is very simple masking, and I suggest you start with something like this if you've never done masking before. Not only does it give you some practice, but it also allows you to use your stamp sets in ways that maybe you didn't necessarily think of. We sometimes look at a huge stamp set, especially a Simon Hurley stamp set that has so many great images in it and feel like we need to use as many as we possibly can on just an A2 size card. We don't necessarily need to do that. You can just take one image and stamp it multiple times by using your masking techniques and create some clean and simple cards with just that one image. So take a look at what you have, take a look at what you can use to mask, and it doesn't have to be masking paper. You can take copy paper and put temp temporary adhesive on the back of it. You can even use that. I wouldn't suggest it for ink blending, but you can give it a try. So I'm just finishing up with this last little cupcake here and again using that acetate so that I don't have to clean my stamp. And if you are cleaning your stamp in between, which should be the right way to do it, just make sure that your stamp is dry. So if you're using a stamp chamois or a baby white, just make sure that it's dry before you continue stamping. So next for this final one here, I'm going to bring out my acrylic block and I am going to use this little present that comes in the kit or in the set. I am going to stamp this twice down onto my card panel here, and then this time I'm going to create three masks. You can create as many or as little as you want, but I figured three is probably best. I can still shift them around, but I don't have to shift them around too much. And it's a really simple image to cut out anyway, so I don't necessarily mind fussy cutting. 
So I'm gonna mask these first two out and then I am just going to start stamping. I'm gonna twist and turn my stamp as I go along. Some of them are gonna be kind of tilted. Some of them are gonna be a little bit straight. And you'll see as I work towards the top, I'm just shifting around those masks as I go. What I want this to look like, and I know I've done this before, this is nothing totally new, is creating a whole pile of presents. I typically use different images when I do this. I don't usually use the same one, but as long as you color them different, you'll see that it doesn't even look like I use the same image once everything is said and done. So you can see that I'm just kind of making sure that whatever image that I'm stamping over or the image that's gonna be behind it, if I'm overlapping anything, I'm just double checking to make sure that I have that mask down because I have forgotten to move my mask before, or I've forgotten to mask images, and then you're pretty much all done after that. <laughs> so just finishing up my stamping here, and then I can go ahead and remove my masks, and you'll see that I have a nice big pile of presents. Now, I'm not gonna show you the coloring for all three cards because I kept them very, very simple, but I will show you the coloring of one just in case you are tuning in for the coloring. So again, I'm like always, I'm using my Copic markers here, and I'm keeping the coloring very simple. So for this ice cream cone, I'm gonna be using some E50 markers, and I'm starting off with my lightest color to map out the darkest areas. This is a round object, so my highlight is going to be in the center. Then I can move on to the darkest color and just add a little bit of shading on either side. I'm also adding a little bit of a shadow underneath where the ice cream would kind of be hanging over the cone and where that top section of the cone is hanging, uh, hanging over or above, I should say, the bottom section, the part that you hold. Then I can go ahead and blend that out with the E55 and just extend out my shadows just a little bit more and then finish off again with that color that we started with, that E53, just for that highlight color. I did color the other two cones the same exact way. And for the ice cream itself, I wanted to have a chocolate, strawberry, and a vanilla. So we're gonna start off with the chocolate and I'm gonna keep my E50s. I have them out, so I may as well use them. But this time I'm gonna start with the E59, which is a little bit darker than the cone and I am just going to add a just basically a line. I'm outlining each section of this the ice cream. Then I can blend it out a little bit with the E57, E55 and then finish off with just a little bit of a highlight with that E53. I started with my darkest color because I want this to have a lot of dimension and I don't necessarily want to over blend it. Now for the strawberry, I'm going to do the same thing. I kept it in here just so that you could see the color combinations I used, but I'm coloring it the same exact way. I'm putting my shadows and highlights in the same area, and I started off with that darkest color again. Now for the vanilla, I wanted to use some warm grays, but I still wanted to leave some white space being most soft serve vanilla ice cream is completely white but I did want to still add those shadows in so I started off with the W3 and a W1 but I just wasn't getting hardly any contrast at all so my W5 is very dry it is very very dry I desperately need a refill I just haven't gotten it yet so I did use it I don't recommend it when your marker is starting to go dry, please don't use it. Not only are you going to not get a great blend because your marker is dry, but you can also ruin the nib. I chanced it because I figured, hey, why not? <laughs> so I'm leaving a little bit of white space there for the vanilla. And now these images are kind of just floating and you can leave them like that. But I want to ground my images. So I'm going to add a shadow underneath these. Now, a lot of people have told me that they struggle with these shadows. Just don't overthink it. You can see that I'm just basically just kind of squiggling out some color here underneath each one of the images, and then I'm just gonna extend it out. I'm gonna extend it to the side, and I'm gonna extend it to the bottom. And you can go as low or as high, as dark or as light as you want. I kept it pretty simple just to make it look as if they're not floating there. Now for this card, I went ahead and just simply stamped out one of the sentiments from this stamp set, 
with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink directly above my little images there. I did end up trimming down this panel just a little bit and then adhered this to a black card base. I didn't use any dies for this. I kept all of these super simple. You do not need a ton of supplies to create cards. So always remember that. I know it's great to get the latest and greatest of everything and every tool and every medium and all of that, but you can still have fun creating cards even when you're low on supplies. So here's a quick look at the other cards that we have created today. I Here's the first one that you've already seen. And for the cupcakes, I just used some rainbow colors here and also grounded those and finished off with a happy birthday sentiment. For the presents, you can see that I added some white gel pen detail there to make them look like different images, even though it was the same stamp. So that is it. Three very simple cards for today. As always, I will leave the supplies listed in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.